So, hello everybody and good evening to you all, wherever you're joining us from. Uh, thank you for taking the time to join this, which is the 19th edition of Let's Talk Equine. My name is Wendy Conlon, I'm an equine specialist with Chagask, and uh, just to say that this webinar is being recorded in the hope that it will be made available in the coming days on www.chagask.ie forward slash Let's Talk Equine. Greg, you're welcome to join us back there and um, just hit your, your video button and your mute button again. So uh, just to, to welcome you both this evening, thank you very much for giving up your time on this stormy December evening. Um, so just to, to say to our viewers as well too at home, for those who may not have been with us before, that there is an opportunity for you to uh, submit your questions this evening. You're very welcome to do that. And you can use your, your, um, your Q&A button, which is generally found at the bottom of your Zoom screen to do that. And we'll do our very best to get to as many of those questions as we can before the evening is out. Um, we are extending the normal time for this webinar this evening to give an opportunity to, to get to, to, to those questions. So, um, you know, I suppose for many of you at home, I would imagine I need to do very little to introduce either of these gentlemen here tonight. But at the same time, I think uh, I should give credit where credit is due. Noel has many times over the years been awarded for his contributions to breeding and most recently having been awarded by the RDS as the breeder of the 2021 National Show following the winning performances of Louisa in the three-year-old Luce Performance uh, Championship and Emerald Mystique as winner of the seven-year-old championship, while Lissadell, of course, placed third in the five-year-old championship this year. So a good, good day out, all in all. Uh, Greg, an Olympian, a Nations Cup winner, Global Champion Tour Grand Prix placed, multiple times Crown National Champion, Speed Champion, winner of so many multiple um, Young horse classes, we can't begin to mention them here, but you know, having uh, reached podiums at the, the Breeders' Classic at Lanarkin and as yet unrivaled as winner of the three young horse finals at the RDS back in 2014 with BP Castlefield, Alberta Mist, and the Homebred Superchilled. And of course, Superchilled this year um, being one of the six horses that contributed to, contributed to the WBFSH rankings for the Irish Sport Horse Stud Book. So, um, you know, another congratulations on that as well. And I suppose, you know, you know, really reflecting on, on uh, your successes over the years as well, Greg, you know, I, I think to many it would be clear that um, I suppose young horse production and spotting the potential in young horses as well is something that seems to be pretty much second nature to you. So our aim this evening is to um, look back and reflect on some of the competition and breeding successes from the past year. And I suppose to look at some of the younger ones that are waiting in the wings at home. And I'm going to, to open up coming to you now, just while I am getting the, um, the, the IT bit sort of sorted here on the side and getting the screen share going. Like, Bally Patrick and yourself have been, you know, uh, I suppose, close counterparts for many years now. And um, I asked you a couple of weeks back, uh, what was your highlight from the past year? And, you know, you, your first reaction to me was to say that it was the day up at the Meadows Equestrian Centre when the three your, your Emerald Mystique and Lissadell and Go Lightly when, when the, all three on the same day won the qualifier for the RDS. And that wasn't a big final day. It wasn't a day probably with a big crowd around the place, but it was your first reaction to me when I posed that question to you. How did it, um, did it feel as a, as a breeder on, on that day for you? And we will come to talk about the horses in a moment, but you know, just maybe while I'm getting a screen share going here, you might just give us a little bit of a reflection on that day as well. Thank you, Wendy. Um, well, it was a, a very interesting day. It, wa it wasn't something I was expecting, uh, hoping maybe when I went up there that we'd qualify one. <clears throat> and instead of that, we won all three classes. And probably more importantly, all three mares jumped very nicely. They were beautifully ridden <clears throat> by Ethan Ahern on the day, <clears throat> and all the schooling that went on in the Broadlicks in the weeks before that sort of paid off. And, and to be fair 
to, to, to win a qualifier for the RDS is damn near as difficult as winning the final. In fact, it gets bigger and uh, it's against the clock for five-year-olds. It's probably a bit too difficult for five-year-olds, to be honest, and maybe not good for them. But uh, it, it, I got a great kick out of it, to be honest with you. Um, I will never do it again and uh, because it is, it is nearly impossible. You have 100 odd in each class and there are top class horses. So in that sense, it was a unique day. I mean, it's not like going to the Olympics or anything like that, but for a breeder, uh, it's pretty important. And, and it was your Olympics. It, it was my Olympics on the day and uh, the, the crowd at home, Lisa and her husband Joe, who were involved in this operation uh, fairly significantly, they were actually watching it as well. So uh, there was, we, had a great, we had great fun out of it all. And then, of course, we ended up winning the three-year-old the first day out as well which probably was a damn near as big an achievement for me because I'm at that for the last 40 years and never got into the top 10. And then I won it this year. So that was a kind of an extraordinary lucky feat. <clears throat> and coming to you, um, Greg, then I suppose, you know, like you've been on Global Champions Tour podium, you've been on Nations Cup podium. How do the wins, wins with the younger ones compare to all of that? I mean, I know you weren't necessarily in the saddle on the day. Ethan, Ethan Ahern did the, the heavy lifting on, on the day up in the meadows. But, you know, you're very, and the whole team, like it's very much a team effort and you are very much a part of those successes when they happen on the day. What do those days mean to you? Um, sure, those days are all very important because um, sure, it's a big operation here. Is lots of good owners, I suppose, and all this one of the first owner and breeders we've been working with, like we're together a long time now, um, which of course, it's just important to always see the yard go well. And whether it be me riding or on that particular day, it was Kevin, or sorry, it was Ethan, whether it's Kevin or any of the lads, you're just delighted to see the horse in good form and just a stable performing well. And it's good for everybody's morale. And, you know, it's just, those days are important and it's great when that happens. So yes, we're delighted. Made triple special for you, Noel, with three mares in the in the mix. Absolutely, and uh, we 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 had um, at that point. I think all of their their mothers were still here. We lost one of them since the mother of uh, Imran Masih died falling. But um, you know, we still have connections with the, with all of them, and uh, the, the the quality of the the riding that day, I thought, was absolutely superb. It's rare enough when any animal comes from the Broderick outfit that they go badly. And for me, that's very important. I don't mind if they knock a pint, provided they're, uh, they go nicely. And uh, Greg Road go lightly in Dublin subsequently, and she she ended up third there in the five-year-old class. And then, of course, he rode her in Anakin and, and um, had one fence down over the over, over three days, which was, a, which was a, you know, a major achievement. Probably some doubts in my mind about the amount of pressure we have on these young horses at this point in time. Emerald Mystique was chosen to go to Lannigan and we decided, look, she's not up to that at this point in time. That's a, a ranking class, 145, certainly on the final day. And the RDS at the end of the day is probably a 140 class and not as difficult. So we, we, we protected her to some extent and hopefully we'll have her for next year. When we look at we look at these animals now, and um, you know we look at these mares now. I suppose and bringing our attention first to Emma Bastique, to the seven-year-old, um, out of out of a mare called Overruled, um, and you know cruising Puissance mare, who unfortunately died um, during the 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 foaling in 2020, which is a, a loss, but. You you still have Emerald Mystique, who's a mare, and you have a uh, full sister uh, shown photographed here. But maybe just talk to us a little bit first now, and and in brief, if you can, Noel, um, as to the strengths you know of Overruled herself, and you know what she was like as a mare herself. Overruled was was probably one of the last foals by cruising. She I didn't breed her. She's one of only two horses on the farm that I didn't breed. Uh, she was bred by a guy called John Hannon, a very nice man from Limerick, and I bought her as a foal in Gold's Bridge. Uh, she's by cruising um, out of a puissance mare, out of a Mr. Lord mare. And she was quite a good jumper herself. She won the three-year-old qualifier for the RDS in Sligo with, with Vicky Foster. Uh, she's a fine big mare, a bit awkward, but uh, a good jumper. We didn't think really she'd make the great jumping, though. She too difficult. But that kind of cross, what would one expect, I suppose, cruising puissance. But her daughter, the Mystique Mayor is a lovely mayor, and we have her full sister. I think that's her picture up on the top there. Uh, she's a, she's a yearly, <clears throat> and she's a very nice mayor. She's going to be bigger than Mystique, 
Uh, so we have great hopes for her. We'll look at her in a second, a short little, short little video clip. But um, yeah, so, you know, um, I might just ask you, Greg, then to come in on, on Emerald Mystique herself. And I'll just let the vid video play here in the background. You must might just talk us through, you know, her traits and what you like and, you know, what you see as her potential and so forth. Uh, well, Emerald Mystique came first to us as a three-year-old. Um, she was one of the first emeralds that we had and of course Emerald was such a good horse himself. We were excited to get her and uh, she was always very technically correct when we free jumped her. Always had a nice technique and we didn't do a pile with her as a four-year-old and straight away as a five-year-old she started to jump a lot of clear rounds consistently um, and you know she's, she's, she's continued to do so the whole way along and Dublin was already like as a seven year old, the classes are quite big and she's maybe a mare. She really tries her best. So you don't, you know, sometimes horse like that, maybe it's as well not to, not to push them too, too early as such, if you know what I mean. Sometimes when you give them an extra year to find the height, it's, it can make a, a big difference to horses like those. And as Noel said, that's why we bowed out in Lannigan a little bit where the mare will definitely jump 145 in time. And maybe 150. I think if we try to do too many big days in the one year as a seven-year-old, it might have, you know, it, it might have damaged her going forward a little bit. Uh, I think it's. I, I think it's interesting to hear you say that about a seven-year-old, and you can see others that are, you know, a year and two years younger than that, and the questions being asked there, you know. Well, the thing is, I suppose every horse is different, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, as I say, that mare is a very blood, very careful mare. She always does try her best and she's sensitive. And it's all right to aim for... Um, some horses are naturally can jump very big fences early on. Some horses just get to that stage a little bit later. And I suppose when you have cruising in the, in the bloodline, you do, we always find that they do get better as they get older. And we just felt that a mare like that, the qualifiers for Dublin, she had to jump three clear rounds, got quite big in, in the meadows. And she jumped really nicely there. And then Dublin in the main ring was, was a big enough class. And she really tried. Like she, to win that final, she went very quickly. And we just thought maybe to put the gun to her head and go and do it again in Lannigan over three days was just a step too far at this stage. But next year, she should step up again. And I think it was the right decision for her. Just for that particular horse at this particular stage, it was the right thing to do, I think. And what do you see as her potential in the sport? Um, she's a, she has a lot of good qualities. As I said, she's very, very careful. She has, uh, she has blood. She has technique. She has a nice pedigree. So whether it be, whether for the commercial side of things, she'd be perfect for the American market next year when she's jumping 145, or whether we keep her to uh, be competitive with her. And if Noel decides to keep her and breed off her, I mean, she'd be a lovely mare to, to use in the breeding in the future. Well, that's, the same, that's the thing, isn't it, Noel? I mean, you have you have her, but you also have the um, full sister as well. So, um, you know, well, we, what, we'll, you, we'll, what we'll, you decide we'll, to do. She's not over big, of course, and she is. Uh, Greg is right. She's extremely careful, and uh, I, I would have to give credit here to Kevin Gallagher. I mean, he rode her superbly. That was only a second or third time riding her in Dublin that he did a mighty job on her because the round against the clock was absolutely superb, and um, of course he's an outstanding rider and. Right, very similar to Greg, so it was a, it was a nice performance. And look, if she stays on to breed, it won't be a disaster. But we'll see how things develop. But we, we will be careful with her because she is a nice mare. Might just take a little quick look at the the sister here, um, Noel, and it is just I the videos. It's hard to get them out in the field, but this is this is the one um, that is the full sister here. So you might just talk to us about yeah. your impression of her. These are slow-mo videos. Sorry, guys, there were just so many in the field to, to, to make it easier to see them. She, she's almost a replica of Emerald Mystique, except that she's going to be a couple of inches bigger. Uh, I saw her running around the Santa Rita there in, in some time last year, and she seems to have a very similar technique. So we'd be hopeful for her. It, it, she definitely will be bigger. She's a very nice temperament. And um, it, other than that, she's very similar to her. Okay, very good. So we'll 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 move on. Um, we'll move on to look at uh, the the other two ladies, um, Lissadell and Go Lightly. 
both from the family of Erko Rain, uh, one of your five star mares. And um, Noel, maybe just to, to start us off on this one, would you just maybe, you know, talk to us a little bit about, you know, the, 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 um, the mare, the grandmother Erko Rain and, you know, her main qualities as you, as you saw them. And I suppose, you know, a, a, a brief reflection on, on the, the strengths of the family. Well, Erko Rain is a, is a very interesting mare. She's by Erko Mina out of a Bahrain mare. <clears throat> Erko Mina, as you know, uh, is pretty much half Irish. He, he was by uh, uh, Minale, Erko Polo and, and Minalek was on the other side. And I crossed her, that mare, uh, with the Bahrain mare. And, and Bahrain and Minalek, if you, it's quite interesting, had the same uh, father. Tullia, who won an Irish Derby. So there was a bit of inbreeding there. But I loved Barry, and I had a lot of them when I was quite young. And they won a lot of Grand Prix uh, for people, mostly Swiss people. And for example, Chain Bridge was ridden by Michael Saywell to win the Dublin Grand Prix. I think Barry was a superb sire. So that, that's the background. And I think it just proves how important the mayor pedigree is in that regard. And then we crossed that mayor then with, um, with cruising to get winter cruise. And Greg can tell you a bit about her. She, um, she, he wrote her and he was second, third or fourth in Dublin in the four-year-old class and also won a couple of the, the, the following year as a five-year-old. He won uh, the horseboard classes with her and then we, we put her breeding and she bred um, Lissadell. She bred a, an older horse by Cardinto and I think he's competing in England. He was a nice horse. She bred Lissadell and Golightly and she has a yearling by Corn. So that's, that's the, the pedigree. But it is in fairness, going right back, as good at an Irish pedigree, or maybe a mixture of Irish and a little Swedish, as you'd find going backwards. You know, Erkomina, just to finish it, Wendy, Erkomina uh, is a pretty famous horse in Sweden. And he's a full sister, a full brother to Markovin, who was sixth in the Barcelona Olympics with uh, Maria Gretzer. So that is a very, very strong line. And they're very popular in Sweden. And I think the genetic features of it came right through to the Sedell and Golightly. And, and just for people at home, I suppose here it's blue for the boys and pink for the girls here on this. And, um, you know, highlighting, I suppose, the number of, of broodmares that, that you have bred from this line as well, too. Um, and I, I gather Diamond Jubilee is one that, that um, you have, uh, Greg, am I right? Uh, we have Diamond Jubilee, yeah. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, would you have anything to add on the family? Uh, they're all very nice. They they all seem to come with lots of blood. Lissadell is a plot blue. Some of the plot blues I've seen have come a little bit on the heavy side. Lissadell is, is, uh, has loads of blood. Go lightly is a for pleasure mare. Same thing, she's all blood. I saw the Cardento that was out of the of the of Winter Cruise as well. He was a, a nice blood horse. And then Diamond Jubilee was a Clover Brigade mare that we had here. She picked up a slight injury when she was five. She was a lovely jumper herself and a lovely quality blood mare and same all her offspring are, they're nice, they're nice blood horses. So it's a help. I'd say it's fair to say in all the most of the, like plenty of blood comes in that line, doesn't it? They seem to have plenty of quality in blood. Yeah, the grandmother, uh, Erko Rain, was a very thoroughbredy type mare, really per almost a perfect specimen you could show her and she'd win a lot of classes. And of course, in the middle of that, you have Touch the Stars. Isn't that right? In the, in, in the, uh, and, and Gold Rain and, and, and um, Touchable. Um, they're all from, they're all 160 horses. I suppose Mulligan Rain Touch the Stars is probably the best performer at the real top level. He won a global tour competition um, by, by Touchdown. And then, of course, Touchable was on as a Nations Cup mayor. She won good few classes at 150 and double clears at 160. So, I think it proves once more, you know, how important the um, the pedigree is. And yeah. Castellar, of course, won the five-year-old final uh, in the horse ball. He, he's in Italy. He, he jumped at 140 there. Nice horse by, by cruising. And there's two more of them there. Miss Mina won in, in the desert in California. And um, Nightfield Mina was, is owned, was owned by Michael Doherty. I think she died. Uh, she, she's quite a, a nice mare as well. So it, 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 it proves that if you have the right... Um, pedigree it does help an awful lot <clears throat> family yeah so we'll we'll look at um the mother of um 
both Liz Adele and Golightly. Uh, this this is her in in her dark days, I, I, I'm afraid. But um, we uh, we just took a photograph over there only only a couple of weeks ago in the in the field at home. Um, no, talk to us about Winter Cruise herself. Winter Cruise is yeah. yeah. a nice jumper. Uh, she's not over big. She's just about sixteen hands. Uh, she's probably breathing bigger than herself all the time. And thankfully, we have her in four to my lord, Tartago. Uh, a bit of trouble with her feet. She got an infection in one of her feet and it went into her bones. So that hasn't helped her in the course of the year. But we have her all right. Uh, she's okay. She's trotting around and she's sound at the moment. Grand mare, nice quiet mare. Uh, lovely technique when she was jumping. So Greg wrote her. He might say something about her. Be remembered. Yeah, indeed, Greg. What, what did you find when you wrote her? Uh, just like that, typical to the to the line. She was a very blood mare, very light on her feet, light footed, nice modern type mare. Um, she was very careful. She was play. I think she was third in the four year olds in Dublin, and she was maybe fourth in the five year old final in Dub Dublin. Jumped a lot of clear rounds. Maybe would it? Maybe wasn't the mare to jump really, really big things. But she would have always been a nice one forty, one forty five mare if we kept going with her. But Noel decided to breed off her and. I think the glory of her is you can give her, you can probably cover her to almost any stallion and she breeds a blood horse, which is a big help because some of the mares, when they start breeding plainer type horses, it, it does limit you a lot to the stallions you can use, but it seems like Winter Cruise and and as well as uh, Winter Cruise's uh, sister, the Clover Brigade mare we have, we can almost cross them with any stallions and you get, you get nice blood type horses, which is a big help. And we look at the, 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 the two ladies here now. Um, I'll maybe just play the video of, of Liz Adele to, to begin with, um, Greg, and you might just talk us, um, talk us through what her qualities are. Liz Adele is very like her mother, Winter Cruz, uh, I would say. Uh, very careful, very light. Um, she's a very competitive mare. She's, she, was, she won the Cabin Classic last year with eight in the five-year-old class. Probably unlucky not to win the Breeders' Classic as well. She had a fence down in the final day. Um, but very good instincts, as you can say. She's light, light-footed. Um, as we keep going with her, it'll be interesting to see how big she's going to jump. She has scope to jump. Again, like ranking classes 145 and maybe 150. And it'll be interesting to see how far she can go after that. But she's, she's a good, brave mare. Very careful and... Again, like down the road, as a broodmare, she'll make a lovely, lovely broodmare. You'll be able to cover her with a lot of different um, types of stallions, and she should she should continue to breed blood. And uh, I might just um, play go lightly here, and you can talk us through that as well, please. Yeah, she's the half sister uh, by for pleasure. I saw her in Knowles when she was three year old, and she wasn't the biggest mare, but she's a great canter. Um, She's well named. She's very light and very like what we said about the breed. Very, very blood mare. Um, sometimes you'd watch her and you think just the same thing. How how big is she going to jump? But when you ride her, she's um, she's very athletic and very nimble and just and probably a mare that's going to jump a lot bigger than you think. Like you see some of the for pleasures that have done really well, like fit for fun and. Uh, Chestnut mare, the Penelope Leprovost had it for pleasure mare. It was very, um, they were they were handy blood type horses, and I suppose you see some of the cruisings. The best ones are the smaller mares as well. So I think she has, she has that on her side. Like I say, some of the good for pleasures and the good cruisings were the type like Go Lightly is. So I think um, she's going to turn into a very nice horse. She got a good lot of shows this year. With, as during the summer, well, we, we were actually doing some embryos, but then we she got busy with the qualifiers for Dublin and then Dublin, the Breeders' Classic in Lannigan. She had a little break and now she, she's just she's just back in this week, but she looks a lot stronger. I'd say she's all the better for it. So and she's going to be a much, much better horse next year. Yeah, she had um, she had embryos. Uh, she had a, a Compargus filly and a, a Louisdam coach. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah and, yeah. and And how do you feel about them? Both lovely blood type horses and they're both by two good fashionable stallions and uh, yeah, I'm very excited about them to be honest. We look forward to them. You couldn't you couldn't pick holes in them, they're nice blood, good balance. And uh, I'm sure the mother's mother's doing everything right at the minute, so it's it's nice to have them to be honest. 
And Noel, you know, when you sort of sit down to choose stallions, I mean, what, what were you hoping that the stallions were going to bring to the equation here? Well, I think with the mother, you could almost pick any stallion and it would work with her uh, because she's so nice. I don't like using the same, the same stallion too, too often. Uh, I was very keen uh, to try for pleasure on her because I knew the mother was very quick in front. I didn't particularly like for pleasure when he was jumping because I always thought he was somewhat heavy fronted and somewhat strange in front as well. He could be open in front. Um, I, I'd worked out quite well. Um, I, 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 we'll see how my Laura Cartago works out with her, but um, we, we might go back to for pleasure. I have one straw for uh, by for pleasure still left. Um, I don't know. I'm afraid to use it in case it won't work. <laughs> but uh, we have one left anyway. The for pleasures are not that easy though. We have some others, and um, sometimes I think you need a manual to ride them and train them, and they take a while to come on. Uh, but that mare is uh, is just a joy to watch. But then the, the other side of this, of course, is this is a five-year-old jumping in Dublin. You don't get to that standard unless you have a sub superb uh, training regime. Uh, like she really is jumping like a seven-year-old there. Look at the way she changes and look at the way how balanced she is. But And that's, uh, with all due respects to Greg, <coughs> um, you know, you, you, that's not that easy to get to, to at that age. And um, uh, it, it's probably the most important feature of her development. And we haven't rushed her. It probably was a big enough class in Dublin. Um, I know there were complaints about the class that you, sh that you show there for Lissadell. She actually won that. It was the, the final of the five year old in Mullingar. And that was a very big class. And a lot of people were unhappy with it. But Lissadell didn't really uh, have any problems with it. It'll be interesting to see how far Lissadell will go as well. Neither mayor is over big. And um, they have reasonable scope. But you just don't know. They're good techniques. So with those kind of ones, you're never sure. And again, Lissadell. It's Kevin that's riding her there, I think. No, it's, that's Ethan. Uh, uh, again, she's going very well for her age. You'd have to say uh, you, you couldn't expect more of her at this point in time. But the most important thing is that she's riding nicely. She's very rideable and uh, she's a very careful jumper. How far she'll go, as Greg said, is another matter. Compare the two, Greg, like which do you think would have possibly the potential to go further? Um... Is that a fair question to ask? Uh, I I suppose they're they're both nice mares. Uh, at this minute in time, I would you'd hope the for pleasure one maybe will maybe has a little bit more jump. And I haven't had so many for pleasures, but from anybody I speak to, they all tell us that uh, don't judge a for pleasure until they get to seven or eight years of age. So she's already doing things nicely and. Um, so I'm 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 hoping that go lightly maybe we'll jump more, but you just you just don't know, you know what I mean? you see a lot of the times of all breeds, like when you have as I said, with when you have cruising in the bloodline and winter cruise is very like cruising. Sometimes you just don't know until you put the gun to their head. You know, sometimes you see them jumping 120 and you think that that's all they can jump, and then you jump 130 and they do it the same way and they continue to do it. Sure. Look at flexible sometimes. I watch them. In California with Rich Fellers when I was over there jumping, you'd see him do the schooling class at 135 and he'd be skimming over the jumps. And if you didn't know the horse, you'd think that that was, that was a nice 135, the Rich is popping around there. And then you'd see him in the 160 Grand Prix on Sunday, he jumps it the exact same way. So I'm not saying every one of the cruisings are like that, but you do see plenty of them like that. So sometimes you just have to keep going and just uh, produce them nicely and they can just stay improving and finding a bit more for you. I think Lissadell is actually more like the traditional Irish horse than going like a go like a go lightly has a nice flick behind. That's not something you often see with the cruising. But Lissadell is more like cruising, I think, in that regard. And the more modern type is the go lightly type, to be honest. And and this one here is um, your twenty twenty. Oh yeah, but she's. I uh, hate your chest corners. Yeah, she is a midland kind of filly. She's not over big. The mother had a sore foot and I think it affected the whole operation last year. She's a very pretty filly, but she's not going to be any bigger than 15 3. Mm -hmm. This is her okay. here, and you can really I see that in the group. I can't really tell you what she's like. I'm just watching her. She's a good canter, that's all, that's all I can tell you. But she's not, big. She's not really that big. And um, I suppose just the other question that I, that I would like to pose to you, Noel, in, in, um, in this 
in relation to this mayor is I mean you've you you've used by far you used um you used stallions and including my lord Cathago that are you know very much high ranking stallions in WBFSH stud book rankings. Is that something that comes into your into your psyche when you sit down to choose stallions or is that just coincidental? Well we, we, Lisa does a lot of that work. She has a <clears throat> she has a spreadsheet and she has options on it for each mayor every year. Um, but the emphasis she has anyway is to use a well-known stallion. Uh, if we get a filly, uh, we'll always have something we can sell, uh, uh, you know, and, and that's an important thing. Or keep, uh, I, I think, recognisable pedigrees and fashionable pedigrees, whether you like it or not, are, they are important. And uh, rather than, you know, you can get other stallions for half the price, but we take the view, look, we'll use the best we can find. If we have a good mayor, we should use a very good stallion on it. And hopefully, after three or four folds, you begin to realise, or you should realise whether it's working or not. So, as a general policy, we would use, try and use the best stallions we can afford. Because, I mean, I suppose, you know, there are many breeders out there that would sort of look at both of you in the scenarios that you're in and say, well, you know, these guys, are, they're not necessarily breeding to sell straight up as foals. You know, is the... the kind of the commerciality of the stallion in that regard as, as important or are there other factors that, that are in your head when you're sitting down to choose stallions? And I can put that question to either of you. Well, I, I, commerciality of it is, it is important. I mean, you would like to cover your costs. I like to cover costs here. Uh, it's, it's very important. And I do sell some foals and I sell some three-year-olds. And obviously, if you have a nice pedigree, it helps in that regard, and particularly if you have a nice blood horse, like a gelding or filly, uh, if, it, if it's not an outstanding jumper, if it has a good pedigree and has a good step, you'll get a pretty good uh, return on it anyway. And we see that as fairly important here. We can't keep them all here. We have, we have only, uh, we have five or six folds every year. It's quite a small operation really by other standards, uh, other people's standards. But um, um, we watch a lot of stuff on television, or Lisa does anyway. Um, uh, and we, we pick them on the basis of what might suit the mayor. Pedigree and temperament. Temperament is particularly important. Some of our mayors are, how would I put it, tricky. And you would need, and we'll see one later on, you need sometimes something, some, a stallion that will quieten them down and the progeny will be manageable. How about you, Craig? I mean, you've, a, you've quite a considerable number of mayors breeding and, um, you know, how how much of a factor is the you know the cost of the semen the commerciality of the sire when you when you're making your choices? Um, sure, I suppose like yeah, it depends. Some people are looking into the price of semen and maybe they they lean towards the young stallion sometimes, and maybe it, it's a little more cost effective. But to be honest about it, I think the, sometimes the the semen is the cheapest part of the breeding. Like if you're keeping a mare longer term and you're paying all the expenses uh, to run the whole outfit. I think, like if you're if you're spending an extra seven or eight hundred euros for a well a well known stallion, I, I wouldn't have any complaints about it. If there's a good young stallion that you know is a good horse that's well bred and you believe in it, sure, of course it's good to use it. But uh, overall, I think you know I wouldn't be I would personally I think when you add it all up, I think sometimes not using the proven stallions. For that reason, has been a bit penny rich and pound foolish, if, especially if you are using, if you are going to the to the sales and stuff like that. So we do like to sell some folds every year, and we have done uh, over the last number of years in folds that have done well and won things. And, and the horse that won the Breeders' Classic last year, we sold them as a foal, and uh, we'll continue to do so. But um, just to answer your question, what we like to do is to do like a fifty-fifty. We like to use uh, some of the young stallions and give them a chance and see how it's going. And it, that does keep the cost down a little bit and, you know, it increases your chance of all the fresh semen. But it's also nice to still see you some of the, the proven, well, well-known well stallions. Yeah, and we'll come now to um, to some of your own breeding in, in Ballypatrick now. And um, this one here, um, VP Cantastic, uh, a six-year-old by Mr. Putt out of Mrs. Quinn, who, of course, you campaigned um, previously, you you might just talk to us a little bit first about the the dam line, um, Greg, and um, you know what your what your your knowledge is of the family to begin with. 
Um, sure, I was just lucky enough way it turned out with Mrs. Quinn and uh, Lee Kruger, who um, we had going global with, had Mrs. Quinn. She actually bought her in Cavan as a six-year-old, and she had she had a good campaign uh, campaign in Canada, and they sent her back to Ireland for me to compete. I had a great trip with the mayor. She won a load of Grand Prix, a lot of international classes, and very very competitive mayor, and um, just a real you know a good solid Irish horse, a good trier, good tough mayor. She was sound and. She was pretty reliable. And you know, she's from a good family. I didn't realize when she came back, but obviously when we looked into it a little bit more, she was a full sister to Shannondale that did some Nations Cups with the Army. And there was, uh, we had another horse, Lawton's Elite, that was a little bit difficult, but he was a good jumper. And there was plenty of horses in the family that, that jumped well. Say Shannondale and Mrs. Quinn were probably the two um, of the more- My God, you turned her on a penny at times. I, she was a serious speed horse. She was, I won the national speed championships that, that time when they had the national championships as a standalone, as a standalone um, competition. And I won loads of Grand Prix everywhere. She was, to be honest, when she was clear, she was really hard to beat. She's a real, a, a, a real good fighter. And her offspring are pretty much the same way, to be honest. Um, like the horse that won the Breeders' Classic this year, fantastic. Same thing. He hasn't a lot done, that horse. And he got thrown in the deep end and that breeder's classic this year, but he has his mother's mentality, to be honest. He just he just grinds for you. He fights for you. And and he probably on paper, I wouldn't I wouldn't have bet on the horse going to um to burn it down. We'd sold quite a few five and six rows this year and we didn't have a pile for the class. And Kevin said he wanted to take fantastic. I thought maybe he might be a bit green and he says, No, he says I horse feels good, he's in good form. So we kinda we, we went along with it. But um, the horse got better and better every day. And in fairness, in the final, on the final round, he had a, a hell of a good round. But the horse had no experience against the clock. So I was delighted. But again, uh, very, very like his mother. Just, you know, the gun got put to his head that day. Obviously, it's a big class and there's a lot of prize money. So everybody wants to try and win the Breeders' Classic if you're going there. I was delighted with him, actually. A lovely horse. How, how, do you, how do you feel about his potential for the future? I think an awful lot of him. He's probably a horse is only coming into himself. Take the Breeders' Classic win out of what he's done. Inside he's 16-3, big powerful horse. But you'd look at him in the stable maybe and you'd say, has he enough blood? Well, we actually call him his name in the barn is Beans because he's always bucking and squealing and he's very, very playful, energetic horse, like he has loads of blood, more blood than he'll ever actually need. But again, Mrs. Quinn was a lot in flight and the same, she wasn't, uh, she maybe wasn't an oil painting, but like he would always try to manage her to keep the blood out of her, like let her in the paddock, a little bit of lunge and to keep her relaxed. Like she was always, she'd be bubbling up underneath a little bit and where I'm not saying he's a hot horse, but he's never... He's loads of blood, so I'm imagining when that horse gets another year, gets stronger, he's going to be, he's going to be a horse to definitely jump international Grand Prix to what level we'll see. But it's a, he's a very, very nice horse. And by Elvis Terpush, who is of course um, a full sibling to your own stallion, to rock and roll Terpush, what yeah. do you feel that you know that Elvis brought to the to the mating here? Um, sure. Like if I think that. Uh, over the last number of years from my experience of it I think when you look at the stallions that have crossed the best with the Irish mares I think it's been the really big scopey horses like Louis Dam has worked very well with Irish mares but like one thing he's done is put a lot of scope into the breed Douglas crossed very well with the Irish mares but he put scope into them from the darker side and uh, when we saw when I saw Elvis jumping in Lanikin with uh, Yaris de Brabander's daughter Carlene de Brabander that's one thing he looked. He looked very easy to ride. He looked a very simple horse and more scope than you'd ever need. He had very loads of scope and I really liked him. So we used him quite a lot in the breeding. And when we're using him in the breeding, his full brother, which is Rock and Roll put, came up in, a, in the auction in BWP and we bought him uh, for that reason, just because I loved Elvis himself. And as I said, um, 
when and of you course, they have another they have another full um, stallion brother favorite ask as well. Favourite ask, yeah, and there's uh, EIS. I saw a jump to Grand Prix in Dublin, and Skyhorse is a sister to his dam. So there's a lot of very current good 160 horses in the family. But as I say, what I liked about it was was that I for me, you have a lot of people saying you need all we need more blood and more blood, and of course we need blood in our breeding. But like, if you don't have a horse with scope, they can't jump a bigger fence. And if you have balance and scope. For me, you have a very marketable horse. And we used Elvis a lot that year. So we have we had several Elvises um, that are six-year-olds now, one being um, uh, BP Limitless, the one in the Breeders' Classic last year with Kevin. And this horse won, Cantastic won the Breeders' Classic this year with Kevin. But both are by Elvis. And as I said, both are out of Irish mares. And for me... It's what I said about like Louis Dams and Darkos. He's put a lot of scope and a lot of balance into them. So he's worked out um he's worked out really well for us, I think. And that's why for me the rock and roll falls that we have, whose rock and roll is the full brother to Elvis. The falls looking at them look like they have a little bit more quality, but they have lovely balance. So I'm really excited to see some of them jump. This horse we see on the screen now, this is actually out of another Lawrence flight, Mayor Bally Patrick flight. She's the half-sister to Going Global. So he's, um, he's a very well-bred horse, but an absolute cracker of a horse as well. He's maybe not always the flashiest, or he's not the most beautiful horse in the stable, but he's, an, he's a real sport horse. Like he, he won the Breeders... He, we, Shane Breen, but I showed him, sold him to Shane as a foal to Shane Breen. He went to Peelbergen with Jack Ryan and won the five-year-old class there last year. And we bought him back from Max O'Reilly, who rides with me after Peelberg. And he came back on a Tuesday to our place, won the Breeders' Classic on a Sunday with Kevin. And then uh, Max, who owns him, brought him to Cavan for the Cavan Classic two weeks later. And he was second in the Cavan Classic with Max. So we did three championships in about six weeks with three different riders. But it's just, that's typical of the horse. He just has a good brain, gets on with his job and he does it. And, I've jumped the horse a few times myself, and I actually think that horse um, is a horse can jump five star Grand Prix all day. I'm mad about the horse when they jump him. I'm just uh, delighted for Max that he owns him. I'd love to own him myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, I mean, part of what you do is trade, and part of what you do is coach. So you know, all yeah, of those, yeah. all of those sort of gloves have to to sit together as well. Absolutely, and it's nice to see the horse go on well. Like he's passed hands and said, We sold him as a foal in the, in the, at the Breeders' Classic wholesale to Shane, bought him back, and then Max uh, bought him again. And he's, he's gone on well for everybody. But he's, he's a typical Irish horse, as I said. He's not, um, he won't win the beauty contest, but he's lovely to ride. You see him there in Lannigan with Max this year, snaffle in his mouth, very simple, just gets on with his job. And his horse will just keep improving and keep getting better. A little bit on the chunkier side to look at. But when you ride him, the same thing. You don't need much leg. He's very natural balance. And um, he's just a powerful horse, I'd imagine, will, will, will jump big things. I would be surprised if that horse doesn't jump um, some, some big Grand Prix in the future, I hope. And, and, and an easy horse to ride as well, which makes it, you know, it's, an, it's, it's a good add-on. And so then, you know, I mean, we've spoken about three different six-year-olds six in the last couple of minutes between um, BP Limitless and CB Contastic or BP CB Contastic and um, Lissadell. Of the three of those, how do how do you how do you compare the three of those as a as a lot as far as potential is concerned? And they're they're very very different horses, I suppose. Um, like if you're if you're going breeding. Noel's mare is perfect because she has so much blood and so much quality. Um, the two, the Cantastic horse and the Limitless horse, are they're bigger, bulkier type geldings um, that are they're Grand Prix type horses if they get there or not. But as I said, they're, they're just different types. They don't look as blood and as modern as, um, as Lissadell, but they're probably big, powerful horses for big jumps in the future, I think so. They're, they're completely fantastic and limitless would be similar type horses. Whereas Lissadell is a different kind of more blood modern type mare that would be, she's going to be very fast and very competitive. It'd be interesting to see how much scope she develops from the cruising side, but there's a lovely blood type mare as well for the breeding in the future. 
And um, just um, you know, to 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 finish out for now um, on the Bally Patrick breeding. I mean, obviously your sister Cheryl she does a great job there, taking care of broodmares and the young stock. And you know, you use ET a lot, or you have used ET a lot, um, embryo transfer. Um, have you experience of using ICSI? Uh, not so much. Uh, you hear mixed reports on it. Um, and I suppose if I had a choice of, from having one from uh, embryo transfer or from ICSI, I would far rather the embryo transfer, it being that um, it's still a little bit more natural. Like if you cover a mare with frozen semen, you're putting in a lot of semen in and, and the strongest one covers the, the egg. With ICSI, you're putting the one individual one in and we don't know if it's the strong one or the weak one or we don't. I personally don't know if that actually makes a difference when all is said and done. But I suppose it is passing out nature a little bit to do that. And I do hear mixed reports that there is some deficiencies with foals born from ICSI. But time will tell that. I don't know. But uh, we are going to try some ICSI this winter. It does increase, you know, if we can get good results from it. From some of our well-bred mares, it'd be nice to get more foals in the ground. But uh, Cantastic and um, Limitless are both born from embryo transfer and it hasn't hasn't done them any harm one bit. And Noel, you, you are considering using ICSI as well? Uh, I am. <coughs> Cheryl uh, and myself are working on, on ICSI <coughs> with some <coughs> vets for, for the winter. Um, in particular, I, I we need to do something with Rink Arena. <coughs> we have three foals out of her, but we're having difficulty with her uterus and so forth. So um, I don't know either whether it's going to work or not, but um, it may be a last resort for certain mayors, and in that context, it's worth a try. It's not cheap. It's not. I don't think it's worth bothering with unless you have a very good mayor, and uh, it, it's appropriate at the time. I don't think I would want to use it on a on an active mayor that's in competition. But um, look, it's the latest technology. It's in use, and there's no point in denying that there that it won't work. There will be some good horses uh, using that process. But uh, you know, we don't have a setup in Ireland. You have to try. You have to send various components of the operation abroad, <clears throat> and uh, it's not a simple process. I'm actually going to just um, throw one or two questions to you that have come in. Um, one one person is asking around the connectivity between confirmation and the follow through to to the foals and the young stock. Um, would either of you uh, care to, to um, give your pennies worth on how important do you think the mayor's confirmation is to begin with? Go ahead, Noel. Well, I would think functional confirmation is pretty important for show jumping and eventing horses. I will not read from a, cr a very crooked mayor. Uh, it's just not uh, worth the, the effort and uh, the chances of them staying sound are not great. But the world has changed a lot from when I started years and years ago. You know, animals, mares with curbs, people wouldn't breed from them at all. Now there's not as much emphasis on curbs, particularly if they have a good hind leg and all that kind of thing. Uh, but I think you have to have what I would describe as, as functional confirmation. Another person has asked a question around um, the use of thoroughbreds and says many people automatically discount thoroughbreds without looking at breeding lines or ability for eventing or jumping. Uh, while they are different physiologically to other breeds, they often are written off without a second look because they're thoroughbred. What would you say to people to encourage them to consider thoroughbreds for other disciplines aside from racing? Um, and I suppose, do, would you, I suppose, is the, is the question, um, encourage people to use them? Both are silent. I'll let you go, Greg. Um, sure. To be honest with you, um, it depends what you want to breed for. For me, um, a thoroughbred mare is absolutely of no interest. Um, but that's personally. It's not to say that a thoroughbred mare can't breed a good horse. And I know it's happened plenty of times in the future. So um, the best to look to anybody that wants to do that. But I can only speak for myself is that... Um, there's not so many, when I think about it lately, and I have thought about it the last even few weeks thinking about it, you know, it's very hard to breed better than the mare herself sometimes. So, like, when I look at, through the, the herd of brood mares we have, I find it hard. I don't see, I see a lot of the, the traits of the brood mare coming out in the young stock. And when I've ridden the mares and compared the foals and the horse we have jumping out of them, 
you know, it, I do think it takes time to move on from the mother. And so that's why it's important to start with a good mother in the first place. And so going back to your question with the thoroughbred thing, like I find, I find it hard enough to breed good jumpers out of the mares that have been good jumpers themselves. So like I don't, I would rather if you're looking for um, well-balanced mares, you know I spoke about the confirmation for me as a rider and uh, from the commercial side of it running the business, if uh, of course we want a, a horse with good confirmation, but the canter balance is massively important because if you have a bad canter, the horses are simply not nice to work with. Uh, the, the, right, the time we have to put into the flat work to make the horses is increased dramatically. So it's uh, jeopardizing the horse's soundness because we're spending more time on them. And the horses that hit the crossbar, which most of them do, are not even enjoyable for the a amateurs to ride because the canter balance is not good enough. So they don't, they're, they're not nice horses to ride. So basically, I'm going a little bit off track, so sorry about that. Basically, no, what I'm no, saying fine. is that thoroughbred mares are absolutely no interest to me because uh, I find it difficult enough to breed good horses from good jumping mares and to lose the, the jump to increase the blood. It's not interesting for me personally. I just want to say something on that, uh, Wendy. I, wouldn't, I would not like to breed from a mare <clears throat> that has uh, OCD. I think it's, it's a very common problem in the European war blood uh, lines and uh, probably becoming more prevalent. In relation to the thoroughbreds, I think the reality about the thoroughbred is this, that if you're trying to breed international show jumpers, you, it probably your statistical chance of doing it are very low using any class of thoroughbred. As far as I can remember, I looked at this a couple of years ago, there isn't a single horse in the top 500 or maybe 1,000 in the world that's by a thoroughbred or has, has an immediate thoroughbred background. But for eventing, I think a thoroughbred is absolutely, probably, uh, it's not essential, but it's very important. Not as important as it was. I would have used a lot of thoroughbreds in the past. But I, unless I'm setting out to breed an eventer today, uh, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't consider it. I'm a member of the traditional uh, society, and I think there's a niche market, a very, very strong niche market for a good thoroughbred. Uh, if you get him with a nice step, horse with a nice step, you definitely will do well with him. But it's, you have to profile what you want to breed. Greg said at the beginning, it depends what you're trying to breed. I think if you're going for an eventing type, the thoroughbred is a reasonable consideration. Going for international short jumpers, probably you would, the odds are very much against you getting anything that will work in that regard. I did make a, 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 um, a point in point there, Greg, in what you said that, you know, what you, what you end up riding as in the product of your breeding decisions reflects is, is such a reflection of the mothers that they have come from. Um, and I don't know if that's something that you would say as well from your years of experience, Noel. Um, oh, ab absolutely, absolutely. You can see it in nearly every one of the progeny. Uh, they had the similarities uh, between the, the, the mother and the daughter and the sons. Uh, sometimes there's an improvement if you have set out deliberately, uh, you know, to try and remove some of the um, extreme characteristics of the mother. It works, but it doesn't always work. Um, it's possible you will breed another lunatic from a lunatic. Yes, indeed. That, that, is, always, that is always the risk, isn't it? Um, so we'll, we'll move on and look at, um, speaking of, of temperament uh, issues that may arise, um, you, you, um, were, you also, Noel, alluded um, when we spoke a while ago um, that another of your, your highlights of the year was accomplishing the win at the RDS with Louisa in the three-year-old filly uh, competition. That's something that, that meant a lot to you as well. And um, I have seen it comment before that um, Lexi Lady, uh, her mother, was not necessarily one that was endowed with maybe the, the, the most amenable of temperaments. Is not endowed. That's it's still the case. Um, uh, no, that, that, that's a very good line, though, in the context of pedigree. You know, the, the mother of Lexi Lady. Lexi Lady is quite flexible. She's out of a Clover Hill mare, Banley Kelly Clover, who's out of a King of Diamonds mare, who's out of a Final Problem mare. A lot of you, your audience probably... Never heard the final problem, but in my young days, he was probably one of the best thoroughbred show jumping uh, stallions in the country. And Lex Lexi Lady is a full sister of a horse that Greg is riding, probably one of his better, best horses, I'd say, Hibernia. And then in the army, there's another brother. There were three embryos born in the one week, Dowd Hall, 
he wouldn't have anything like the scorability of, um, of Hibernia. But he's a real winner. He won five classes, I think, for the Army in Spain there a few weeks ago, 130, 135. He's in trouble when he goes above that. But um, the, the, the Alan Cahill Clover has had a superb record. You know, she, she bred Cruzan Clover. He was a Nations Cup horse. Uh, I was just noticing the other day in his past record, he was in Copenhagen on the Nations Cup team for Ireland. And he was second in the Grand Prix to Zorocco Blue. He was 0.2 of a second behind him. And you know what Zorocco Blue has done since. So he was a very good horse. And then Greg, of course, had a wonderful time with that. I had a wonderful time with um, Golden Exchange. He could jump 160 uh, and won the six-year-old final in Dublin. And there's a whole bunch of them there over that pedigree that have done well. There's a number of 145 horses in it. Um, and Lexi Lady um, has bred uh, that Louisa. And the different, she's, there's no doubt Lexi Lady is difficult, very difficult. She's only 15-3 as well, by the way. But the, the daughter by Louida is an absolutely lovely temperament. You wouldn't think she was her daughter at all. And um, I think Louida, uh, Louida did, did that to a lot of horses. He quietened down the mad streak that's in some of them, you know. Flexibles are not easy. I've had quite a few of them. Uh, can be very hot. Some of them are unmanageable, even more difficult than the cruisings. But if you can get a good one out of a flexible mare, I think uh, you're on a winner. And I love that, Louisa. The, the reason I was mentioning winning it is I, I have jumped in that, I've had horses in that class for 40 years. I was never in the top 10, jumped them just normally, and it never worked for me. And I don't know will I do it again. I have won it, and I, I, uh, I was delighted with it. But I've never thought I would win it because there's a particular training technique for that which might or might, might, or might not appeal to certain people. So that is a very nice mare. I don't know whether you have a video of it or not, but she's definitely we'll come to that chart, one yeah. for the future. All right, I'm talking yeah. too much, Brenda. Uh, no, you're okay. And, and obviously you, you were um, close competitors on the day in the RDS. Uh, you had um, two fillies in the past as well, the Gerardo fillies, Greg. So it was, was also likewise a good day for yourselves. Yeah, they're two nice fillies. Uh, Gerardo's uh, stallion we have here is by Gerardo and very, very, he's a lovely horse, lovely to ride. Um, he's a horse we'll, you'll see plenty of this year, hopefully, as an eight-year-old. His, his types that he's breeding are very commercial, I think. Um, for anybody that wants, I think he's going to breed very good jumpers. He had second and third in Dublin, but the glory of them is he, they're nearly all uh, bays and blacks, very uphill, very correct horses, and look like they're blood enough to event the ones that maybe don't jump well enough uh, should be very marketable event horses. So very happy with them. They're two, two lovely mares that were second and third, but to be honest, they didn't have an issue being second because Noah's mare is just is a better horse. So fair play to them. Right. Well, the That's very amenable for you to yeah, say. There's a bit of catching up to do. But, uh, the, the Louisa mare is a very nice horse. She deserved to win in Dublin. And we, were happy. We, we, we will talk about her. We, we, we'll look at a video of her shortly. Um, you're all because you know this family as well very well, Greg. Um, you know you've you've been on uh, more than one or two of them. What's your impression of the family? Um, I like the family. They have a lot of scope and a lot of heart. Um, and lots of good results on Golden Exchange. Um, all the way along, and a really scopey mare and Hibernia. Then BP Hibernia is the half brother by Flexible. And, you know, he's had a bit of a stop-start time through his career. But when the horse is on form, he's, he's ultra-careful. And I think he's a horse. We seem to have him in good shape now. We'll bring him to Florida. All going well. That's a horse who can definitely jump five-star Grand Prix and be competitive. Even though he's only been, you know, he's won at 150. But um, I think there's plenty more in the tank. So hopefully we'll see, he'll have a good year. And then Bally Patrick Flamenco is out of the full sister to Golden Exchange and the three-part sister to Hibernia. And sure, again, he's been a great horse for us. He was second in the national championships overall last year. He was national champion this year. And he's been a good, he's been a good front runner for the yard. He's won lots of 150 classes. And again, he's a horse next year as well. If he gets his opportunity with Kevin, he'll jump around some 160 classes as well. So it's a great, great line of horses. Nearly all the horses can jump 140 from, from the mother line. And there's there's plenty of them in there that can jump bigger as well. So I mean, that's 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 a very good record. 
we look um we'll have a look at um at golden exchange um Noel. so golden exchange uh by cruising herself uh born in 2005 uh campaign by greg um which of you would like to comment on her herself go ahead Noel. She was a good mayor. Um, she was a typical cruising. Uh, a lot of time spent with her, training her and developing her. She she wasn't uh, easy easy to train. Typical cruising. Uh, she had a great win as a six year old in Dublin, and she won a lot of horseboard classes. She won she won forty classes, and uh, she jumped with four faults in the Belgian Grand Prix, uh, won six day. And um, no, so she she did her job. She has. Um, and she, she's, uh, she's a fine big mare. She's 16'3". Um, not a typical cruising to look at, but um, she's not in foal this year, but she has a foal by um, uh, Tangelo uh, on the ground, that filly that's in that picture in the middle there. And that's a very nice, very attractive looking filly. And um, she also has a yearling somewhere uh, by Tangelo as well. Um, that's not him there. That's out of... Um, uh, Cruise leaf, I think, but she has a yearling that's not unlike that horse. I don't know whether the picture or not windy, but so we'll be yearling and a two year old. And I sold uh, a three year old uh, to try and balance the books um, uh, uh, this year. And uh, I actually think she ended up in, in, in GBBS um, by, um, what was he? that's right, he, by Kassan. Yeah, and he's a very nice horse, and I think he will, he will go places. <clears throat> Um, we look at the we look at the foal as you're 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 uh, querying the um, the yearling. Uh, yeah. so. that's her there again with the white blaze. I think that's her. Yeah, she's a nice canter. She's a very nice foal, very attractive. Uh, Golden exchange a little plain in the head, but this filly foal is, is just lovely. She's a very attractive filly, uh, and will will be. I think it's one we'll be thinking of keeping. Um, so. I don't know where she is in that whole setup, but uh, <clears throat> we were lucky to get something. Yeah, it's like hard that, to see them on the video. Yeah, it is, yeah, it is. But anyway, it's a uh, that, that that that's a nice picture over there in the middle. Um, mm -hmm. 2021 filly by Tangelo. That is uh, an attractive sort that you'd be thinking of keeping as a as a broodmare, provided she jumps. And your choice of of Tangelo as a sire, um, Noel. Well, I, I, I studied him, Lisa studied him for quite a long time and we decided he would suit some mares and not other mares. And we don't like covering the, the mare, the same stallion, uh, for more than twice or three times. So we went, we've gone twice and that's it now, we'll go for something else. She's not in foal this year, uh, so we'll try something else next year with her. <clears throat> I think he's a very nice horse, of course. He has a wonderful record. Um, Darry, uh, Darry Lou and... Uh, there's plenty more of them out there at the moment. I think he's going to come into his own. I tell you, he gets very nice types. They're very good conformationally, and they have nice temperament. That's my current experience of them. Um, conformationally, nearly perfect. And you, you have um, another that is um, that is is in fold to um, Shakun Blue. Uh, what's it for? Emerald. <laughs> Emerald, oh yes, Emerald, Emerald, Emerald is, is out of Golden Exchange. Yes, sorry. Emerald is out of Golden Exchange. That is a very nice mare. Unfortunately, she had an accident and she turned over and she lost an eye. And we could have jumped her, but we, uh, we, we put her in four late in the year there uh, to check on blue. But uh, it was unfortunate she lost an eye. But it's not the end of her. She's a good looking mare and jumped plenty. Uh, it's just that we have so many jumping as we probably decided we'd, we'd leave it at that point, you know. You've used um, Tangelo as a sire as well, Greg. Um, we've used them not a lot. We've we've a couple of Tangelos. We didn't we didn't use them not for any given time. There's lots of nice Tangelos. It's just it's just not a standing we used used the pile up. But we have we have several young horses here by Tangelo, and you'd have to say he's he's a very nice sire, and they seem to be nice horses to work with. The picture of the, the one up in the corner there, um, that's it. Oh, yeah, you have it here. That's the that's the that's cruise leaf actually. There, sorry, Wendy. Yeah, this is cruise leaf. Yeah, that's cruise leaf, and that's when the fall last year's fall was uh, only a week or so, a couple of weeks old. And that's the fall that won the fall championship last year. But the mayor herself is a beautiful mayor, as you can see there. She damn near win a show class. She hasn't, she was lame, she, she had an accident as a fall. 
not so much an accident as an infection in her coronary band and she's been kind of lame ever since but she's a beautiful mare and she's had a wonderful record like she bred flamenco and of course she bred glimmering and that foal uh, i think in the in the, the previous picture you'll see uh, a picture of him in the foal championship last year but um that's golden exchanges um <clears throat> foal i think to no, further back. Yeah. so you're 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 <laughs> feeling this is cruise leaf's home that's Cruise Leaf's fall, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. the lad that won the championship last year. He is a very nice year to, to look at anyway. I don't, don't know how athletic he's going to be, but you can see there, he's a very good model, he's a great canter, and uh, the, the judges were very complimentary about him last year. That's, that, that, that's not him, that's the Emerald Mystique sister. <clears throat> No, um, that wouldn't be him. It's the, that's the freeze frame on it. You need to let me go to the video. That's All right, sorry. Yeah. That's the freeze frame on the start of the video. So, right, just, okay. just bear with me a second. <clears throat> so, that's, that's, him there. that's, so, that's the first one. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. This one here. He has a great canter. <clears throat> yeah. But he's a nice looking horse. So, um, we'd be hopeful for him. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll just pop back down here now. Um, by Patrick Fomenko, you've mentioned him already, Greg. Um, you know, he's, a, he's, a, he, he's really done his job very well over the last while. He's, he's, been, a, he's been a right horse. Um, I bought him off Noel, actually, when he was a three-year-old. He was up in Vicky Foster's, and I remember lunging him in the sand ring at home when he came back, and honestly, he was as good. He's as one of the... One of the best ones I ever lunged on the end of a on the end of a lunge rope in the sand ring here at home. It was absolutely magic. And then we put the saddle on his back, and to be honest, he he kind of fell asunder on us a little bit. He was he, he took him a little bit of time to find his balance, and he's a big horse, so it, he he took him a while to get strong. And it was near the end of his five year old year, turning six, before he actually started to show um, what he could do as a three year old, but. Uh, it's just interesting enough, and as I said, for me, that I see so many horses from falls right up the levels all the way along, it's interesting to see that, like, say, for instance, that particular horse, if I saw him as a four-year-old without seeing him as a three-year-old, I wouldn't have bought him in a month of Sundays. Like, it's just because I'd seen him jump so good as a three-year-old um, multiple times, then, like, I stayed believing in the horse and knew that it was in there. And what would have stalled you at a four-year-old? What was the what was the shift? What was the change? The horse just had lost all his power under the saddle, and there was no like for a horse it was so flashy and as a three-year-old, and it was completely natural because uh, like any horse I've ever had from Noel and from Vicky, that's they are exactly what you see. So I was very confident that the horse was very good, but he was just big and he was weak and raw, and he would never. One thing he never did was he never would knock the jump down, but like if you brought him to a four-year-old class and there was. 24 year olds in the class he probably would have finished uh between 15th and 20th to be honest just because there was absolutely no flash so we didn't bother with doing too much with him we did a little bit put him in the field did a little bit put him in the field and continue to do that and then it was at the back end of his five-year-old year he was doing some meter classes on uh, an odd 110 and he started to maybe if there was 12 jumps in the course maybe five jumps he'd start to actually jump them like he did free jumping and then as a six-year-old, he was just, then he, he had it, he was off. He won the Breeders' Classic as a six-year-old and had some very good results and continued to do so the whole way along. But it's just interesting, as I said, to see that, like, for me, I love to see them in their natural environment as three-year-olds, see how good they are, because some horses, you put the saddle on their back and they get it quite quickly, and some absolutely don't. And, like, I didn't want to sell the horse as a four-year-old, but if I did want to, I would have struggled to have a client for him as a four-year-old, but actually there, the horse has gone on. He's the best 150 horse in Ireland now on paper. And last year he was a point off being national champion. So they all come in their own, their own way, if you know what I mean. But and that's in their the own time. In their own time, for definite. Like, but uh, he's been a great horse and he's a, he's a good, sound, careful horse. I'm sure Touch would, if he stays healthy, he's going to stay doing what he's doing for, there's a, there's a, there's a good few years more left in him. I think, uh, Wendy, uh, mm. Vicky Foster, Broke him and broke his, his half brother Chaco Bay, and uh, some more of them there. And you know, I think she did a very good job on them. A lot of the horses I had in the early years, well, until up to now, uh, Dickie broke them and she did a very good job on them. And some of those horses 
um, are not simple. They're, they're uh, high power temperaments with the cruising backgrounds and King of Diamonds in their background. And uh, she did a very good job on them and they wouldn't be, they wouldn't be where they are today without the work she, she put into them, you know. And I think here's one if you want to see it. This one gave me a great kick during the year. Are you going to show this, uh, Wendy? Yeah, off you go. Yeah, that, that horse is, is by Chaco Blue. He's out of the, the mother of Valley Patrick Flamenco. And Edward Doyle is riding him. And Edward has done a fantastic job on the horse. And I've got a great kick out of this horse because he was jumping 110, 120 at the beginning of the year. And now he's just, he just won a 140 Grand Prix. He's generally, uh, he's clear or four falls in all the Grand Prix in the last few weeks. You can see he has a fantastic jump. But um, his head sometimes is not where it should be. Uh, but Greg, uh, Edward has done an unbelievable job on him, you know. A very blood horse, typical Chaco Blue, and God knows where he'll end up. But um, he's made a tremendous advancement in the course of the last six or eight months, you know. Uh, but not a simple horse by any means. Vicky broke him and she always said he was outstanding. <clears throat> so we, we, Edward has brought him a long way. He, he's won one Grand Prix, he's been placed in a couple more, and um, doesn't have too many fences down. I know he's not one that's in your own stables, Greg, but I mean, you, you're familiar with the horse, you know him, you, 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 what you, what's your impression of him? Uh, he was for a while, and I would say I have had very few horses pass through with so much scope as this one. He's some jumping in this horse, but he was, he was an unrideable kind of a fellow when he was young, and uh, he definitely had a mind of his own. No badness in him, actually, just very nervous, very sensitive horse. And he's quite a big horse. And Edward is actually, he's brilliant with those type of horses as well. And actually, Noel and myself chatted about it. And we thought it'd be a good idea to let Edward ride the horse for a while. And he's found a very good way with him. And the horse has turned inside out. So fair play to Ed. He's done, he's done a brilliant job in him. But the horse was always really talented. But it was just um, a lot going on in his, in his mind just to get the horse to settle and to to go the right way but he seems to the penny's dropping on him now so um, he's definitely that horse is not going to run out of scope anytime soon because he jumped a few big jumps in my indoor as a five year old and he could do it the same as any nine year old so it'll be, it'll be exciting to see where he ends up I know we didn't actually really chat about Cruzley herself um, you know what, what do you feel she has contributed um, I, as a mayor herself she's a fabulous mayor and even we met Lou schooled her a couple of times and she's just a, a very good jumper herself. We couldn't do a whole lot with her because she's a bit sore. But um, there's no doubt she's probably been the best brood mare on the farm in the sense that she breeds big horses, scopy horses, they all jump. Her, her daughter, Glimmering, won the seven-year-old final of the horse board and jumped a couple of clears in 140 with Greg and co. And um, she's breeding with us now. Um, but she's coming near the end of her her era, I would have thought. She does have two coming along that we you haven't we have you haven't seen. One is by for pleasure. Um, he's a five year old. Greg has him. He, he Greg and myself own him between us. He had him out, I think, for the first time a couple of weeks ago. Maybe he'd say something about him. Um, this horse is again. He's kind of going to be a bit of a slow burner. Um, he has a good canter. He was very sharp, um, but. Again, no, no real badness in him. Just very, you know, just hard to get the horse to settle. But he's actually, he's getting there now. He's a good canter. He has huge scope. He wants to be careful. He's just a big raw horse, to be honest with you. And I, as I kind of said to Noel, he's not really a marketable horse for us now. But we're not, we're not in a panic with him. And I know it's an awful thing to say, but he's actually, the way I look at him is that horse will be nearly in the way around the place till he's seven and then he's a horse and be able to canter into big rings and he'll be able to jump big fences. He's not, when I say in the way around the place, he's not a horse that will be a competitive horse maybe in the five-year-olds or six-year-old classes. But he's a horse that maybe horses that are competitive in five and six-year-olds when they're starting to run out of jump and go backwards, this fella's only going to be developing into a horse that can jump Grand Prix. But you can see him there in cabin, like he's only stepping over the jumps. But at home, we have, you know, we've made some bigger jumps and wider jumps for him just to see what he can do. And scope is absolutely no problem to him. But he's, as I say, he's a horse that maybe you mightn't see a pile of five and six-year-old classes, but maybe he's a horse when he gets to big jumping, he, 
he he'd be he should be there thereabouts, I would imagine. And is that is that you know like the feel that you get off him, Greg? Is is, is it is it as much what you feel when you're in the saddle with those kind of horses? Yeah, it is for definite. Like, and that's why you have to work with him to get to know him. As I said, like he there he is now popping around the one ten in Cavan, and sure it's it's unremarkable. He's not doing a lot wrong. He's not doing a lot right. But as I say. You see him cantering there. He's light for a big horse. He's balanced. His lead changes are good. So there's, there's, there's plenty to see. He's just not impressed by a 110 track. Like he's just a little bit steppy over the fences. But actually, when he makes a mistake, he always reacts. And um, so he's kind of a horse, to be honest, who will probably stay away from the young horse classes with because he's, he's not going to be competitive at that level. But as I say, when you, jump, when you put the fences big and wide, the horse finds another gear and like you can make the horses ride better and you can you can you can do grid work and v rails and whatnot to make to help their technique but it's very hard to put scope into a horse and one thing that horse has abundance of is scope and it's actually what most of the horses we've had in our yard from cruise leaf they have they have loads of scope so um this horse is the same and as i said to you that's just like when we chatted about him, he's, he's not a horse that will be will even be paying much attention to if he goes to the show and has a fence or two down or if he's clear. We just go through the motions with that horse so we put some nice mileage on him and he gets out and about. But really, that horse is going to, you'd imagine, come into his own when he's seven or eight years old. And she has another one then, a four-year-old, <coughs> Kassal. Uh, and he's um, a nice horse. Um, I think this is him, isn't it? Uh, right? Yes, yeah. That's him just getting going in Ryan's in Turles, yeah, in school and show. He's four-year-old. He's very, very easy horse. Like, you wouldn't put, uh, you know, the amateur market is a very big market for us. Initially, the for-pleasure horse is a lot more sharp and sensitive. This Casal is a lot easier. Uh, very simple horse, very balanced. Lead changes are good. And he's a horse that will do... Um, it looks like a horse could develop into a Grand Prix horse down the road, but uh, another saying that we'd say sometimes if he's, he's the typical of a horse that if he hits the crossbar, he's a horse that a lot of people will be able to ride. So he's a very safe horse to go forward with for us because when you put the time into working them, you don't want to get to the end of the road and think, okay, he's not, he's not the superstar horse we hoped and now we have nothing. A horse like him, if he's a Grand Prix horse, brilliant. And if he's not... We get very well paid for selling a horse like that to the, for instance, to the American market. He's a horse that girls would really like to ride around 145, I would say, worst case. So for me, that type of horse, I really like to go forward with. He's exceptionally green in this video now. Like they're, they're really backward. And, but like, again, we, I've seen the horse free jump plenty of times and we've him riding around at home around some nice courses. And I do what I see, I like, and all that breed get better. So nice horse. Oh. There's no doubt when, they, when I had them as three-year-olds, both of those horses jumped well. The Casal probably looked the easier of the two, as Greg says. The for pleasure horse was somewhat a little bit uneven in front, typical of the for pleasures. But it's amazing since he started to work with them and the job they've done on him. He's evened up and he's very good in front now. And finally, on that lot, just to finish it, Wendy, we're hoping to get a Casal uh, a filly out of a, it's an embryo, I think, this year. Um, and I hope, um, the vet thinks it's a filly, and I hope it is. Casal is not a cheap proposition. That's the only issue with them. And if I got a filly, a filly I'd probably move on. But I, I would say one thing about Casals, and Greg mentioned it there, I think he, he, he brings a bit more sense to the mares. Cruise Leaf has bred a couple of fiery ones, but the Casals seem to be nice out of her. You know? And um, I think that's the feature I've seen with other Casals that I've had. <clears throat> so, but I have no filly, and I'd like to get a filly. That's, that's the quest, isn't it? Well, the vet thought at 60 days that that was a filly. So I hope she's right. So oh, this, this is another lady out of Cruise Leaf. So another root mare out of Cruise Leaf. Um, and she's currently in Fold Plot Blue. And she's had a 2020 by Plot Blue and a 2021 by Agonix. Yeah, they're both, both nice folds. Uh, Rearings and folds. They look, they look okay. They're reasonable canters. They're pretty... Uh, good confirmation, both of them. Plot Blue has <clears throat> plenty of blood. We had a Plot Blue out of uh, Cruise Leaf and he, and he didn't have enough blood. Uh, but I, I like that. Uh, the, that Plot Blue is a nice horse. He looks a bit sleepy there and he's got a sort of winter coat, but he's a nice horse. 
and the Agonex is a very nice ball. And of course, Cl Glimmering was with yourselves, um, Greg, previously as well, with, and Dara, Dara rode her, and um, she was uh, winner in the, the seven-year-old uh, final back in 2016. As a mayor herself, what were her attributes? Uh, she was she was very light, very blood. Uh, she was by lucky whole guy, so uh, he had the, the the thoroughbred influence there. And you would see like she's much lighter than the Geldings, for instance, from uh, Cruz Leaf. Um, but like I said, when like I spoke about the two Elvises that we spoke about earlier, Fantastic and uh, Limitless, they they might look a bit on the chunkier side, but when you ride them, they have a lot of blood. And the same with the Geldings from Cruz Leaf. They're you know they're they're not they're not thoroughbred type horses, but they have loads of engine. Like, like they have loads of in their head. They have more blood than maybe horses that look to have more blood than them. Um, and maybe Glimmering was on that scale. Sometimes she had too much blood. She was on the hardy side, uh, but she had plenty of blood and plenty of lightness, and she had plenty of scope as well. So it'll be interesting to see how she breeds. Uh, here, Noel, we can look at the plot blue. I just need to find the time stamp on it. Um, I know it's a, it's a little Glimmering. awkward that these videos are all together. Yeah, uh, there's the plot blue. He's last, I think, in that line there. There he is, the, bla the bail out. Yeah, that's him. Yeah. Yeah, he's a nice canter and he's a nice horse. Seems to me to be a fairly hardy officer. I haven't done a whole lot with him. We've led him and haven't looked schooled him or anything, but he seems to have a nice canter there. He's going to be a big horse. Glimmering was sharp. Uh, she jumped around the 145 class in Balmoral, I think, and uh, the second or third. She was second and <clears throat> good few of the 140s. So it'll be interesting to see what she breeds. Lockahoe Guy would not be famous for um, producing show jumpers. She's probably the only one that's known by him. That's, her, that's the Agonex colt out of her, the lad on the right there. That's him cantering, yeah. And she's back in, sorry, she's back in fall to. Um, I can't remember, but she's back and forth anyway. Glimmering is back and forth to something or other. Glimmering is Glimmering in forth. Is back and I don't know. Well, I'm not sure about that yet. We haven't Top tested blue, it. Top blue, you told me. That's, that's right, that's right. But I'm not sure about that. <clears throat> I haven't. But you, you like the foal very much. I do. Yeah. Um, this is sexy lady. This is the mother of... Uh, this is Louisa. the mother of Louisa. Yeah. And I'll play a clip of Louisa from the audience. Yeah. This mare, uh, her mother died, and her uh, she was an embryo. The mother died, and the next the, the, sip, the one that was trying to rear the foot, her died as well. And she was reared on a bucket or a bottle with an ass. Um, she is one hardy lady. <clears throat> Vicky Foster took her to um, uh, to Ballinasloe and thought she, she could win the three year old championship. I think the only thing she jumped was a car for her. Uh, but she she was very very athletic. That's the filly. I I really think that's a very nice filly. And Greg has seen her as well. He likes her. It's a, it's a right it's a right good mare. This one, yeah. Uh, See, we jumped her. We jumped. We had her at home three or four times there. Jumped her, and she looks really good. And then I must say, in Warrington and in Dublin, she was she was very nice. Now she was a, a well well deserved winner in Dublin, and I'd say. Nice to see horses at windows, three year old classes go on to be good horses, and I'd be surprised if that mare doesn't do some very good things in, in her in her career. She's a, she's a right good one. And what but, is it specifically about her, Greg? That you know, I mean, you see it for somebody who maybe is sitting at home and doesn't see it, what what is it about her that, that makes her special in your eyes? Well, I suppose first things first, she has a nice pedigree, she has a lovely mind. Um Louis Dam's in general, you don't see a pilot Louis Dams that are winning the three-year-old or the four-year-old classes in general. Like, they're horses that get better with age, like, they develop into it. And that would be typical of the line as well. Like, they're, they show scope. She's out of a flexible mare. And so, like, Louis Dam with flexible, you'd imagine it's a horse should really get better with age. But just, um, just everything about her. She's just very well balanced. She's lovely canter. Um, and... I'd say, you know, she's not only going to be a good mare, but she's maybe quieter than some of the other horses that of the breed will take a little bit less management and the balance is lovely. She already does her lead change as well. And you know, I'd say it's just going to be a nice, easy horse to produce and to work with. So a nice, a, a good, exciting mare for the future now and a, a definitely a deserving winner for me of the class. 
Well, it was nice of Greg to say that because his own two videos were very nice. <coughs> the brown envelope wasn't big enough, Greg. That's the only thing I can say. DJ, <laughs> DJ O'Sullivan bought a uh, broker and, and he, he showed her for me in Dublin there. And I think the fact that she was broken and riding helped her. But that's a real natural jump. Like she is, as, as you might say, she has very good hinges. And you don't have to be at her or anything. She just jumps naturally. So we have her home at the moment. She's out in the field. She's out in the wind and the rain today. And she needs a bit of a break. So we might not do a whole lot with her as a four-year-old. Um, a lot of interest in people wanting to buy her. But I, I'd like, Lisa wants to hold on to her. She she's, uh, thinks she's going to be reasonable. So we're, we're not going to make any claims at this stage. But uh, yes. she did do something for me that I never had achieved. And that was to win a three-year-old class. Yeah, so, well, congratulations on that, Noel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is, this is um, your 2021 filly out of uh, Lexi Lady by um, Tangelo. But, Talk and she about is, her. That's right, her. she is a very nice filly. And I'm watching her cantering around the ring. She's the leader of the group. She's very active. When you watch her book, she has a great back in. She's very like Louisa, or maybe I'm imagining it, but I think she is. But I, I like her. I think she's a, a, a very good model, well put together, as somebody said to me. I'll try to get her and she, I, for I, a she, snippet. She, she seems to have... She seems Sorry. to have... Sorry. <laughs> she seems to have a good, good, a good temperament. Jumping on me. I knew the technology would let me down at one no, point. No, it's all right. You've seen yep. her for, but she's, um, she's a nice ball, and uh, we'd be hopeful for her, you know? Uh, there she is at the front of that lot. And, a real leader, a typical of Louisa was the same, and the mother's the same. <clears throat> there she is, there you can see her at the front. Yeah. And the mayor was in fall, uh, she's not in fall, the mother's not in fall this year anyway, at the moment. Yeah. So that's that, that's her. So, um, Greg, we're, we're going to return back to your um, your Ballypatrick breeding. Have I slipped this uh, slide there? Am I okay? I am okay. So um, you might talk to us about this one, Olivia de Moose. I'll maybe let the video play in the background here. Olivia de Moose, uh, that's the bay mare on top. Uh, lucky to bump into a friend of mine, founder in Belgium, uh, John Kennedy. Um, I'm mad about this mare. She's, when you ride her, very smart, like she just gets it. She's just, um, like her instincts are good. She, can do a lot for herself, you know, some horses you need to really train them and ride them. She kind of can do a lot for herself. Um, she's just kind of a natural jumper and a lovely kind mare and a great, and a great big type. And uh, you can see her family there as well. She's, um, she has two siblings. She's up to 140 level. She has two siblings jumping 150 and she's from the narcotic, the muse and curly chin, the muse line. So, um, I'm excited about her and just as a type for me to produce and uh, commercially, not just as a jumper, but as a commercial type, she's lovely looking and she's a horse that um, a lot of people can ride in the future. Um, she'll carry a lot. I, my hope is that she's going to end up as a nine-year-old jumping 160 classes, but she's a horse that a lot of people will be able to ride around 150. Um, so commercially, it's a very valuable horse for us to have in the stable. Um, she had two falls before we bought her, one by Casal and one by Untouchable. So she's actually doing well to be up to the level where she's at because she carried those two falls herself. And the one underneath, when I looked up Horse Telex, uh, I saw that she had a filly by Untouchable, which is the grey one. So I was lucky enough to buy that in Belgium. And that's her lunging at home in the indoor. Lovely blood filly, very athletic. Um, Mad about her, to be honest. We have her broken riding, lovely balance, jumps exactly nearly already how she jumps on the end of the lunge rope. So I'm excited about her. And we have um, we have two we have two embryos from her for this year. We have a rock and roll from her own stallion, and we have an emerald. And she has a a fall on the ground by Lucky Luck. So we're very lucky. Um, Olivia and Amuse had uh, she had four. Falls born this year. She had two rock and rolls. She had an Agonix and a Contagus. So we're going to have a lot of that line before we know it from embryo transfer and whatnot. But I think it's, well, I, I'd be surprised if it doesn't work out well, to be honest. 
want your glue out to sit on that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's something else, isn't she? She's a nice, nice blood mare, and um, she's she's a big blood lady as well. The grey lady mare. She's going to be sixteen three, but she's very narrow in blood, which I like, and she seems to have blood balance. But I won't do a lot with her as a four year old. I'm going to stay. We have a couple of nice. The last few years, what we've tried to do is keep the best two or three sort of two and three year old fillies in the bunch coming through, and just break them and have them riding around the little course, but then concentrate to try to do embryos on them and try to get embryos from our best young mares coming through and I think I think it should work out well actually some of the four-year-olds we have a good group of four-year-olds this year they haven't really been out to any registered shows we've done some training with them and stuff mm -hmm. and I find that the, some of the best ones are from the good young mares that we use for embryo transfer so I think that's something that's going to work well but another thing that like okay I'm sorry now we've Olivia the Muse and her daughter on the screen but one thing I'd like to say that I have found as well from a personal point of view is that we see some mares that have uh, reached good results and have a good record. I've had horses over the years and there's lots of riders that have had horses over the years that on paper have had some very good results. But when you have riders that are hungry and maybe are short of top horses, you can, you, it's amazing what you can, when you get stuck in the results you can happen with. But if you're offered that horse again at three or four years old, do you want it? Sometimes you say yes, and sometimes you say no. If you say no, then that's that's not a great thing. Okay, the horse might have a record, but it doesn't mean that you want to particularly produce or ride a horse like that again. So I like what I like about the young fillies is that it's not results based. Like we bring the young horses in, we have a small indoor where we free jump them, and you see them completely natural from the shade or from the field. You see their balance, you see their type, and you see that they, everything is, they're doing is not because they're taught, it's because it's coming natural to them. And I think if you have a well-bred filly that's a good type with a good counterbalance, which is really important, that they're well-balanced and jump in a nice way, I think if you can get the embryos from them, personally, I think they should breed that on, which I think is important. Sometimes we get hung up on results and all that and performance mares and if you have performance mares that jump in a nice way and do the things that I'm speaking about then that's even an added bonus but there are lots of mares out there that have achieved good things but they're very awkward to ride or they're you see you have to have big bits or they have stiff canters and they will breed that on and I'm not sure that that's the way forward whereas like if you have a nice modern type filly with a good balance that jumps in a nice correct way naturally not because it's completely uh, drilled into them and trained into them. I think that that's a far better route to go, to be honest. Good advice, um, Greg. And like obviously the other big part of the equation now is the, the, the soundness element, you know, that's such a big part in the whole commercial scene, x-rays and so forth. I mean, that, is that something that you pay much or a lot of attention to in terms of your, your, um, your broodmares as well? Um, I'd rather not be breeding off. Um, I'd rather I'd rather to be breeding off sound ones with good X-rays because everything now revolves around X-rays and the breeding side of things. Um, so yeah, it's very important. But it's not like I'm. We're just lucky now in that we've built up our breeding program, and God knows we've lots of improvements to make to it. And and you're all the time trying to swap and change and do things better and it'll always be the way, hopefully, that we continually try to improve. But that's just one thing, one trait that I've noticed in that um, Mrs. Quinn and likes of Bally Patrick Flight have bred well. They're mares that competed to a high level and are from good families. But I just like, I like the young mare um, option because, as I said, you're, you're getting more, you're getting more, they're more fertile, so it's easier to get the embryos. But as I said, it's just nice blood, good types of fillies that are young with good balance that are jumping well because it's coming natural to them, not because they're prepared. Like it's very difficult to see some of these horses when you go to sales and auctions and stuff. They're they're well trained and well organized for the day, so it's it's hard to see what's what when you're bringing your own young horses out of the, the pens or the fields or the sheds and you're jumping them in your own environment and you see what's good and what's not. It's a lot easier to make judgment of them. And I just found that, for instance, you're going to play BP Wakita here, I think, the grey one. 
that's the last one um, that we're going to, to show, yeah. Yeah, so be, that, that mare is by Pacino. We bred her out of a, a cruising Cavalier. Her mother is a cruising Cavalier Diamond Lad. The mother for a cruising, because she had a Cavalier grandmother, some of the cruisings to canter can be a little bit difficult. Um, not the most balanced. Not all of them, but some of them. Um, when you have cruising with Cavalier, it just helped the canter balance. And this mare is by Pacino, out of the cruising Cavalier mare. But she was a lovely... When I speak about a three-year-old, and we brought her into the small indoor to free jumper, she was magic, like light as a feather, really balanced on the turns, active mare. And she's jumping... Uh, she jumped some 150s last week in Las Vegas in her first... Um, in the indoor World Cup show there. But I have two embryos, four-year-olds, out of this grey mare that's jumping now. But like that, they're just lovely, lovely modern blood horses. And whether they're going to be superstars or not, sure time will tell. I'm not saying they are. But like their mother, they're great types and they have great balance. And they're horses that wherever they find their level, they're very valuable horses. So um, the, the filly up above here, the bay one, um, that looks like... Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's the sister. That's a half sister of um, Wakita, yeah. That's a daughter of Wakita by Jatem Flamenco, actually. Um, oh, okay, that's yeah. wrong information passed on. So <laughs> yeah, a bit of yeah. mix of information, but like that's, that's okay. That's the daughter of uh, of Wakita there, and um, same thing. She's breeding lovely, lovely blood horses. So we we're just lucky to get that bay mare, the mother there, out of the grey mare before we sold her as an embryo. And now that bay mare, when I free jumped her, made a lovely shape. Um, made a lovely shape in the indoor, and like that lovely modern pace is lovely modern canter. And we've she's I leave her actually breeding. We won't we won't she is broken, but I leave her breeding and try and get as many embryos as we can because that breed has been lucky for us. And they're as I say they're modern and commercial, so hopefully we can start to develop on that, build on that a little bit. No, look at I mean it's been really interesting to to talk through all of those. I'm just gonna drop out of the screen share there and um stop the, the screen share on that. Um so uh yeah look thank you both very much for going through all of those. Um I think you know for everybody at home it's 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 nice to get the insight from um people such as yourselves, you know. Um I suppose, you know, before we wrap up this evening, because I am conscious that the clock is certainly ticking on now at this stage, um, you know, you're both very passionate about the sport. You both invest a lot in the sport. Um, and you've had the ups days and the downs days and, you know, all that goes with all of that. In looking forward for the next period, the next five years, the next 10 years, you know, what would you, what would you most like to achieve for the even for next year, um, but looking, looking forward for the next while, what would you most like to achieve? And what do you think needs to happen, I suppose, within the sector as well to, to lift things to the next level? Well, I, hard I, questions maybe, are it's they? A it's a difficult question. Uh, I, I, I think in our operation here, Lisa, Joe and myself would probably like to continue to produce some nice horses that can win at the RDS, win the horse board classes. And uh, we have a couple of jumping the Grand Prix at the moment. I mean, we didn't mention flexibility. Edward Doyle is going fantastic on him. Uh, I li we like to have horses that can compete at every level. And I hope we can continue to do that. And if we get beyond that level, like we did with Touch the Stars and Touchable, um, like it's a bonus because the pin pinnacle is very narrow at the top. You know, they're kind of freaks when you get to Olympic level <clears throat> or World Cup level or Global Tour level. Uh, I would like to see... I think there's actually quite a number of reasonably nice stallions in the country at the moment. I've used Rock and Roll. I've used um, Gerardo this year and there's another young stallion. I also think there are other stallions around the country that are quite good and have quite good records. And I think breeders should look at those and they can use them. And I also think there are a number of mares around that people haven't heard of. And I think if you search for them, you'll find them. I saw Philly, for example, by uh, the cruising clone in, in Gores Bridge recently about. I would have been Master Imp Mayor, I think it was. That would make a lovely brood mayor, I would think, you know, with the pedigree. So they are there and they're not that expensive and you don't have to be using casals uh, and those kind of horses all the time. Uh, most people can't afford them very often, you know. Uh, I would like to see, in particular, more emphasis by Horseport Ireland 
on pedigrees and genetics. I think that is absolutely crucial. And that all their classes for, say, for the jumpers anyway, and also for the eventers, that is an element of a, a reasonable mark for pedigree and genetics. As somebody who's come from the dairy industry, and I know they tell you cows don't jump, but the reality is the dairy industry would not be where it is today and Kerrygold would not be where it is today if we hadn't followed genetics. So that would be one of the <clears throat> issues that would be foremost in my mind going forward. How about you, Greg? What are the aspirations for, for you at a personal level or for, for Ballypatrick and the business and the farm? Or um, how, do you, how, do you, how do you view things for the next? Well, I just think, to be honest, I can see myself is that yeah, we're in Ireland, we're on an island, we're a little bit away from mainland Europe. But one thing like I've seen over the last few weeks in particular, the amount of good clients that are around looking for horses. There's more five-star shows uh, everywhere around the world now then it's just getting bigger and bigger like we have the major league now in america which is like the the american version of the global tour in in, in europe and so you have more and more in mexico there's a tour and some i think there's f six five-star shows in mexico so like you have all this um huge input at the top level um it's creating more and more opportunities for younger riders they're looking for more and more horses at this level and there's there's so many people uh, that are willing to spend money on good horses um, coming into our sport more and more. Um, so I just think that there has been a lot of interest in Irish horses as well from the Olympics to have Pacino O'Meara, to have Kilkenny, to see those horses come from Ireland has been great, among other, lots of other good horses that are doing really well. But I just think that if, if we can concentrate a little bit more on uh, just what Noel said, genetics, to improve our pedigrees a little bit more and to try and think about breeding top-end show jumpers. Um, I just think that we can do really, really well out of it. And I think that the Irish horses are definitely improving and I think there's better horses around. But I just love to see people believing that we can, that they can do well out of it. Like if they buy some good fillies or invest a little bit and try and, you know, to try and get a little bit more to the top of the pile, like to, to try and use a better stallion with a better mare. I think, I genuinely think they will get really well rewarded for it. I think there's more people around looking for the horses. Um, it's a great country to produce them, like Horseport Ireland. In fairness, they have put a lot into horseport classes. We have Dublin. We have great ways of producing the horses. We just, if people can just try and put a little bit more thought into it, try and, you know, improve their fillies year by year and use, use this, best stallions we can I think that we can really you know in the next number of years we can really compete on the world stage more and more with Irish horses and for us that's all I went trying to do is just try and concentrate on our better mares and improve just keep trying to have better horses around us and uh, as I say the business from what I see of it it's it's a booming business it's only going to get better as I say when you see the top end so good and more people coming into it it's going to filter down so if we Concentrate on getting good horses with good genetics on the ground. I can't see why it's not going to lead to great things for us all. Would you not concur? That, would you not also concur? I suppose that that you know the quality of the young horses coming out year on year has been improving. In Ireland, mm -hmm. it's definitely improving. Uh, I the only thing that I see is that um, it's still the mind, the num we're breeding plenty and we are not our 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 standard is getting higher but there's still the percentage of people that are actually purely trying to breed show jumpers is still quite small for what i see and i would like i'm a complete homebird i love being in ireland i'm like proud that i have my business here and set it up and i have no intention of not doing that we've invested a lot but like i i'd love to be buying more and more of the horses around ireland and to be um networking more with the breeders in ireland and to be to see the whole Irish horse to improve and get better and better. So, but like what I do see is that there are, the standard is improving, but we still have a ways to go. And I think that no matter how well you do, no matter how well you breed, you still have to breed numbers to get the really good ones. And the more people that are with good, better mares and using the better sires, if we have more well-bred horses in the pot, then it's obviously going to increase our chances. And I just, from what I see, yeah, the standard is improving. By all means it is. But I still see an awful lot of people that are just, uh, they don't, you know, just they're not starting with 
if they could start just not focused enough yes exactly and it, people that set out to actually breed show jumpers and i think uh the business is so good with it uh, at the minute that i can just see i can see people doing really well if they concentrate and put a little bit more thought into it there's lots of people around with good expertise and that you talk to um that i think i genuinely think it'll pay dividends i'm sure it will actually to be honest and as i said i'm not i'm absolutely not running it down there's it's definitely improving and there is definitely better horses but i think with a little bit more focus we can we can definitely improve it a lot more keep keep doing better keep improving keep setting the goals and keep yeah yeah as, and as i said it's just like making the pot bigger with, with more well-bred fillies and using the better, you know, the best sires that are available to us. And the more horse we can put into that system, of course, we're going to get better and better. And there's going to be more good horses in Ireland and coming from Ireland. And then that's going to attract in the better clientele from Europe and America and North and South America. And like the more foreign investment we can have coming in, investing in our horses, the more people are going to be able to put back in uh, as the steps down along it's going to filter down and, and it's only going to bring the standard up. But there's people there around the world absolutely crying out for horses now. They can, there's more, there's more money, people have more money to spend now than they can find the horses. So horses Which is breeders, great news. Absolutely fantastic. Great news. So like, I can guarantee you that for the people that like put a bit of thought into it, keep a better type of mare and use a good stallion, I guarantee those people will start to do really well out of the business going forward. And then like, as I said, I'm not, we're breeding, breeding away. We have loads of improvements to make and constantly trying to improve. So um, like from, from our point of view as well, we're constantly seeing how we can make it better. But what I do see like from the commercial side of it and from clients coming in and out of the yard is that it's unbelievable now the amount of people that are looking for good horses. So if we can put some thought into it and uh, our standard, bring the standard up more and more. And like in not that long a space of time, like Ireland is really going to be a destination for people to come and see top jumpers. And I suppose just, you know, in, by way of, of kind of concluding as well, too, I mean, the, 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 um, the relationship that both of you have developed over the years with, you know, yourself, Noel, as a breeder, working so closely with Greg and the team at Ballypatrick as the riders and the front end of the sport, albeit that you're breeders as well, you know, that kind of interaction and the engagement of the breeder with the sport itself is so crucial um, to the whole understanding of what you're actually trying to produce for the market as well. Absolutely. I think it's a, a massive advantage to have such a close contact with the, <clears throat> one of the top riders in the world and the team that are there. And I think every breeder should try and develop some sort of relationship uh, with uh, with that level of, of the sport, and uh, follow it on the on the various channels. Like, there's no excuse nowadays for not knowing what's going on. I mean, it's, the information is there, but you don't need to study it. In, in, in all the other sectors, whether it be for daring or any other sport, uh, you can see it's all changing, and you need to be ready to change with it. You know, the horses that are jumping well today, <clears throat> they're a different type of horse than the horse that jumped. When I was growing up, and um, the quality of the riding, the number of the riders that are so very, very good, and the preparation of the horses to jump at the levels they're at, even if it's only the RDS qualifiers, like the, the standard is absolutely superb. And we will, Greg is right, there are a lot of very, very good young Irish horses coming along. <clears throat> and hopefully, some of them will stay in Ireland and some of them will compete for Ireland. Um, and uh, I think even when you only win the Irish classes, so, so to speak, there's a lot of satisfaction. A home win is a great win. You know? For some people, it's their Olympics. Uh, uh, absolutely. And that's kind of where we started the conversation, was your Olympics up at the medals. So we might wrap <laughs> this conversation up with that comment there. And um, I'd like to extend my thanks to both of you for your contribution and your insights this evening and for sharing that with our, our viewers here this evening. And thanks for the patience of so many viewers who stuck with us right to the end. Um, appreciate your time also um, for joining us. And the winds have calmed down outside here, I feel a little bit. So hopefully we all can maintain our, our power and electricity to keep us going for the rest. And uh, I, would like to extend a, a happy Christmas and all of that to everybody, even though it feels a little bit early to say it. 
But um, thanks to the listeners who have stuck with Let's Talk Equine over the last uh, year and a bit. Appreciate your, your time with us also. The next Let's Talk Equine will air on the 1st of February in 2022. Um, until then, a uh, huge thanks to both yourself, Noel, and to you, Greg, and to the wider team at Valley Patrick for helping out with sending on information and so forth. Um, so I bid you good night and um, thank you very, very much. And uh, unfortunately, now Zoom is a very cruel and rude machine. So I literally just uh, press the button and we are good night. But thank you very, very much to thank, you both. Thank you, Wendy, for the courtesy. Okay, bye bye now. Bye bye. Thank, thank you. Good